different on our faces, right? Because unless you're really careful to do that, you know, the shadow might be pointing in one direction for him and another direction on me, which would be kind of uncommon. So there's a lot of little tip-offs to that. But yeah, like going in, zooming in, and looking for artifacts would definitely be a way to tell uh, if, if it's a fake or not. Absolutely. All right. Now, you had asked a question before about is there any way to paste into a new layer? No, when you, when you let's say, uh, I wanted to copy an area like you did uh, on the train. You copied an area and put it over the smiley mm -hmm. face. Mm -hmm. uh, Photoshop wouldn't automatically combine those layers. GIMP does. Well... In other words, you're asking me to paste into a new layer, <laughs> right? Oh, okay. All right. So. Isn't that why you had to anchor it, though? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let, let's back up. Let's go and open this guy up, and let's go and do the same thing we did before, and we'll make it into a new layer. If I go and copy this. Yeah, we'll make more than one smiley face. We'll do the opposite. I could go and do copy, and then I could say paste as a new layer. And now I have that guy on a new layer, which I could take and where am I going? Oh, here we go. Then I could go and move that layer where I wanted to. And I could go and duplicate layer. I could put a string of smiley faces up there. So yeah, if you simply paste, it pastes into the same layer. If you say paste into, then you can choose a new layer. Because it showed over on... Yeah. Okay. So right now I have the background, and then I have two layers each of which are just a smiley face. Now, again, if I went in here and looked really close to this, I didn't want to do that. If I looked really close to this, again, I, I'm not sure how easy it is to see. Like that, you can see just definitely a line between the two. Okay. So what can you do? Well, what would you do in that case? Well, you could do any number of things. All right. The way I would do it is you can take layers and bring them back together into one layer. All right. Which I can go up here and I can say under image, flatten image. And what flatten image does is it just brings all those layers down to one layer. All right, so if I want to keep them separate, I could, but I could also bring them all down to one layer. Then when I did that, I could use the smudge tool to sm sort of smudge that line up a little bit in between it to make it a little less obvious that those are two things pasted. Exactly. Again, do keep in mind, how do I want to say this? It only needs to be as good as it needs to be, right? Uh, if you're attempting to uh, create a forgery, then yeah, you go back and you clean your tracks pretty well. If you are attempting just to make something look cute for a web graphic, then you know you don't necessarily take all those extremes to, to get there. You know, as long as it looks good at a normal resolution, you're you're. Uh, in good shape. All right. When I'm, um, let's see, let's go back to this guy. I'm not going to save this one. So right now this guy has two layers. All right. If I go to save it, I 
It's going to tell me a couple things. JPEGs can't handle transparency. I have multiple layers with transparencies. So therefore, this can't handle. I can't directly save this as a JPEG. So I have to go and export it. And I can choose the quality again. And I can click Save. And it will go and then save it as a JPEG. But when I save it as a JPEG, then it flattens it together. And there's only one layer. So if I were to open this up again, I'd lose the layers. Well, what if I wasn't done with this? All right, what if I still had more work to be done on this? Like, you notice there's some stuff over here that could be cleaned up and some stuff over here. But let's say I'm done for today and, and you know, I'll get to that tomorrow. I don't necessarily want to save it as a JPEG because that will lose my layers. I want to save it in a format that retains all the layers so I can go back and save it. That's where sort of the, the proprietary or native format of the tool you're using comes in. Now, we're going to see this in virtually all the multimedia that we do, that there's two kinds of, of, of files that we're going to use. We're going to use the files that we work on, and then there's the files that we're going to publish for the rest of the world to see. The rest of the world needs to see these as standard image formats, that is JPEGs or PNGs or, or GIFs or whatever. We, however, we're going in and we're editing and we're manipulating and we're making changes with this. Therefore, we need the ability to save this with the layers so we can jump back in and continue to work on it. So we're not going to save it as a JPEG. We're going to save this as a GIMP, in this case, XCF image. That is sort of GIMP's own internal format. And that will retain the layers so I can go back and work on this and not lose anything. So if I go and save it like that, I can go back and close that. When I come back tomorrow to work on this and I open it, it'll open up in the GIMP and the layers are maintained so I can continue to work on it. Yeah? Are those proprietary formats usually compatible with each other? Uh, well, yeah, I believe so. Usually you can, you know, it's kind of like using OpenOffice to open a Word doc. Usually these are able to go in and open up something. Like, for example... Is one of the available extensions PSD? PSD, I believe so. Let's go and let's see Save As. Photoshop image PSD. So you could save it and do that. The reverse would be true. You should be able to import it. Now, just like anything, when you go translate that, there, there's always a potential that something gets messed up in the translation. Like, I use OpenOffice, and I can open 95% of Word documents just fine, but every now and then, something comes down the pike that I have trouble open. I imagine the same idea would be here, too. We're going to notice that, though in all the multimedia, whether you're talking about audio files, whether you're talking about movies, and, and depending on the tool you use, animations, there's always like the format for the developer that has all the detail, you know. Then there's the format for the consumer of that, you know. In music, in recorded music, you know, they record tracks upon tracks upon tracks upon tracks of music, you know all the different instruments, and then they can mix them and do this and do that and add effects. That's for the creator of that to have in the control so that they can do everything that they want to do for that. But we don't have software. The typical user, rather, doesn't have software like Pro Tools or, or any of the good audio uh, editing software. We just want to listen to an MP3. So when the day is done, you have to go and take the multimedia from the developer's format and export it into the consumer's format. All right. You'll notice that when you make when you make videos, when you make audio, and again, some sorts of animation are like that as well. So, again, what is sort of the message of this? The message of this is 
that you will likely save, you know, think of the things that we would want to save if we were doing this edit. I would want to save that original JPEG, all right, of the apples, all right, just in case I wanted to do anything with it, I wouldn't want to base off of a copy. I wanted to base off the original. I would want to save, if I was working in Photoshop, the PSD, or in, in this case of the GIMP, the XCF file, which is my developer's file, which will allow me to go back and add things in. All right? And then finally, I would want to export that to uh, my, my final image to a JPEG or PNG or something that the users can use. So you're going to save a lot of files when you're doing this because, again, each one fills a certain role. You know, there's the end product that the user is going to get, there's your raw materials, then there's sort of the working copy that you do your manipulations on. Let's play around with another kind of manipulation that will hopefully um, cement some of these tasks. All right. Let's say, not that I have some kind of complex or anything, but... Let's take this image of a tree and have me in the horizon overlooking the campus. That's not too spooky. All right. So let's go and do that. So I'm going to open this guy up and I'm going to edit it. Oops. I then can go and say open as layer and open up the second image, which is which one? Starts with the three seven. There we go. All right, so now I have my two layers. I can turn either one or both of them off. Now this one shows on top because that's the sequence I did it in. I probably actually want it in the other order now that I think about it, right? I want the, the trees are going to be over top of my face. So I can just rearrange these in the layer. And now that's there. Now one thing that you can do either intentionally or to help you like get things lined up is I can change the opacity of this. So I can go and make that image see-through. And that in itself might be a nice effect to do in some cases, maybe not in this particular image, but in other things, where you can have sort of something in the foreground that you can, that's sort of a watermark, and then a, a more solid image in the background. Now I'm going to say my head is too big for this one, right? I don't want to be, I just want to be, I just want to be like looking in the background, but maybe be about as quarter as big as this picture, not roughly the same size. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can say resize layer or scale layer. So let's say I want to make it about 25% of the size that it normally is. So I can go in here and say I want to scale it to be 25%. Scale, and there I am. All right. I'm going to go and I'm going to put me, whoops. I'll go put me up there. Yeah, let's go put me up there. All right. Now, where'd I go? Well, you can't see me. All right. Actually, let's move me down over here. All right. Yeah, there we go. Let's say I'm coming out of the forest. Yeah. A Sasquatch sighting. <laughs> exactly. All right, so notice what I'm doing. This is my practice. Again, you know, people develop their own styles for this. But what I do a lot is I will, if I'm working on a layer, I'll hide the other layer just because I'll, I get distracted or forget I'm on the wrong layer or whatever. So a lot of times I will hide the layer. 
So now we have to make it, if I go and set the opacity of this guy back up, you can't see me at all. Well, we're going to use the same trick we did before. That is, I'm going to go in and I'm going to, for this layer, I'm going to set an alpha channel for it. And then what I can do is... Any of the techniques that we used before, I'm going to use the, the fuzzy select tool and select things on that layer and delete them or clear them. Is it possible to say hide the image but still be able to edit it? What do you mean, hide the image? Well, like, say if, say if you hit this, it hit the tree here, and then you just selected, you know, a box the size of your other layer. Would that edit the layer even though it's hidden? Yes. Okay. But you see, the thing is, is I want, I don't want to do that because I want the tree to be in front of me. I see. If I did that, I would cut out a rectangle and my face would be in the oh, middle of the tree. I see. So yeah, we could do that. Now. Now, this would be a very slow and tedious process, but, you know, let's go and let's Get our eraser tool going. You could go and erase. Again, I'm not taking a lot of care to get this perfect. I would probably go back later on and smooth the edges. Pardon me? Pretty soon Watson will do it for us. Exactly. That's what that IBM supercomputer thing at all. That's slower at them. What? It's slower at them because they're trying to teach you how to carry on conversations and have bad words from the internet. <laughs> it's been known to happen. Actually, it probably, if it's really intelligent, it probably picked up the bad words from its creator, and then the creator told it to lie and say that it got it from the internet or cable TV. Just like if your kids ever swear, you know, you tell them, tell your mom that you picked that up from cable TV or, or from the internet. You didn't hear dad say that. All right. Again, I'm not here to do that perfectly, but as you notice, as we do that, we can make that poke through however much we want to, however fine we want to make the, uh, the erasing. Then what we can do again is we can go in with the smudge tool and smudge these, these edges a little bit to sort of make that look a little cleaner, especially after we have merged the layers. go in and we can now once you flatten it if you were to select more and remove it the, the background image still come through or? no because once you flatten it you've you've brought those layers together it's flat you've lost the sense of the layers so again um, before you flatten it you probably should I probably should have saved it as a layer and then do some little bit more editing so again it's, it's a case of again doing a little bit you know, getting the layer part of it done, saving that, then merging the layers and doing any final touch-ups that you'd want to do. So if, it, if you were doing, like, professional image editing, would the best thing to do to be, like, save after every different process you do? 
Yeah. Every 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 main yeah every main pro yeah I probably would. That way I could roll back to any point. All right, you could roll back to any point. Other questions? You could still click undo though, couldn't you? Yeah, I could click undo and go back and do that. undo that. That's true. And you can undo every step since you opened that file. Yeah, you actually have underneath undo. Where is that? You have an undo history. So I can scroll through to any point. Since I started this and get back there. That's why I'd like to start using GIMP more. Uh -huh. uh, because the version of Photoshop I have is kind of limited. It will only let me undo one step. Ah. So. Yeah, that, that can be inconvenient. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Especially if what I am, am famous for doing, I don't know if I'm famous for doing, but I'm famous in my own mind for doing this, is forgetting what layer I'm on and run the eraser and then doing it like three or four times and looking, it's like, wait a minute, nothing is being erased, realizing I'm erasing a, an invisible uh, uh, layer and then having to go back and undo it. All right, um, I have posted the next assignment dealing with images. Uh, take a look at that. Um, Wednesday, uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do Wednesday. We'll figure something out. All right, see you in lab. Can someone turn the light on when...